Hey everybody, welcome back to the War Boss Fish channel. Today we are going to be going over another of the Age of Fantasy armies, this time the Havoc Warriors. But before we hop into the Havoc Warriors, we're going to talk about our 3D creator of the week, and this week it is Bestiera Miniatures. I'm not entirely sure I'm saying that right, even though I love these models. Every chance I get to do something weird, horrible, or just downright disgusting, I come check this out first. So all the stuff you're going to see today comes from the Bestiarum catalog. So let's go to the Havoc Warriors and we are going to start on the special rules. Battle ready. This model and his unit get scout. Breath attack. Once per this model's activation before attacking, roll one die and on a two plus one enemy unit within six and in line of sight takes one hit with blast three and AP one. Chosen warrior gets plus one to hit in melee and shooting. Demon. This model may be deployed as if it had the ambush or the scout rule. Dark Blessing, once per this unit's activation, pick two friendly units within six, which get plus one to hit next time they fight in melee. Dark March, once per this unit's activation before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within twelve, which may move by up to six. Doom Caller, once per this unit's activation before attacking, pick one enemy unit within twelve, which gets minus two to its next morale test roll. And Mutations, when in melee, roll one die and apply one bonus to all models with this rule. On a 1 to 3, the attacks get rending. On a 4 to 6, they get AP 1. So as you can see, it's all pretty standard stuff, except for that Doom Caller. The one which forces the enemy to get minus 2 to its morale test is an invaluable thing. When you're charging into combat, if you think you're going to win combat at all, just go ahead and throw that on there. So that when you do win, odds are that unit's going to get pinned or run away. Dark Blessing and Chosen Warrior are also really good for the extra to hits, but with this army, your Havoc Warriors are going to be a 3 plus, 3 plus, so that plus 1 to hit in melee, not 100% necessary unless you want to really push it to get to the 2 plus quality for your melee attacks. And Dark Blessing, I think, is better because that one, you could bounce it around some more and put that on, like, Barbarians or Knights or Hounds or whatever. So let's go ahead and go to Spells. Barbed Spikes 1, target enemy within 12, takes 2 hits with AP 2. Horrify 1, target enemy with an 18, gets a minus 1 to hit rolls next time it shoots. Dark Chains 2, target 2 enemy units with an 18, get minus 2 next time they advance, or minus 4 next time they rush and charge. Impale 2, target enemy model within 12, takes 2 hits with AP 4. Havoc Charge 3, target 2 friendly units with an 18, they get AP plus 2 next time they charge. Thornfield 3, target 2 enemy units with a 9, they take 6 hits each. So the offensive powers are offensive powers. Let's look at the buffs and debuffs. Horrify for minus one to hit rolls with shooting. It's not bad, but it's not great. And it's only a strength one power, so that tracks. Dark Chains, reducing the speed of the enemy, making it so they can't run away from all of your beat stick close combat units. That's a good one for the army. And Havoc Charge, the one that gives you AP plus two. This army has a lot of AP plus one just kind of built into it. So if you run into something that is beefier, that has like a 2 plus or a 3 plus save. Havoc Charge is great to have in your back pocket to put on top of some of your units to make them into beat sticks. So let's go ahead and pop into the army list. We start off with the Havoc Master. 55 points, quality 3, defensive 3, hero, and toughness 3. He has 3 attacks with AP 1 from a heavy hand weapon. You can give him Doom Caller. Fear of 3 with the Army Standard Bearer. He could be a Caster 2 or a Caster 3 and can put Dark March. And you could put Dark March on them. We just talked about the spells, so, you know, Caster if you want it. Army Standard Bearer if you want to make sure that you're going to win combat with that Fear of 3. Or Doom Caller if you think you're going to win combat anyways. This is going to make sure that the enemy fails their morale. You can replace the heavy hand weapon with a dual heavy hand weapon for four attacks AP1. A heavy lance for three attacks AP1 with the lance rule, which as you can see, now that I can scroll over stuff, you get AP plus two and you charge. So if you're going to put this guy into a cavalry unit, definitely go for the lance because it's going to synergize with everything else and it gives you AP3 whenever you charge. Heavy halberd to give you rending with AP1 and heavy great weapon for three attacks AP3. And for mounts, you could do a horse to give him fast at impact 1. A demon mount, which gives him 1 attack at AP 1, fast, fear 1, impact 2, and toughness 3. And a manticore, rending claws for 6 attacks with rending, fear 1, flying, and toughness plus 6. A havoc dragon for toughness plus 12, breath attack, fear 2, flying, stomp, 
4 attacks AP1 and 6 attacks AP1. But at that point, we we're starting to get pricey at 370 points to throw him on a dragon. And you could also give them the Chosen Warrior upgrade to make them hit on a 2 in close combat. Now, of course, you're going to have your Havoc Masters that are going to be in your warrior squads. And for those, either I would say use Doomcaller or one of the caster powers. But let's say you really want to break a unit. You're going to put this guy into some heavy cavalry. And for that, give him the army standard for fear 3. And then put him on a demon mount. Which means it's going to be fear 4. Making him scarier than even the biggest of the giants. Alright, next unit is the Barbarian Champion. 25 points, quality 5, defense of 5, furious hero and toughness 3. 3 attacks with a hand weapon. Your Barbarian Champion can be Caster 2 or Battle Ready, which gives this model and its unit Scout. Replace the Hand Weapon with a Dual Hand Weapon, a Halberd, a Lance, or a Great Weapon, and you can put them on a Horse. Now, for this Battle Ready Scout, remember that our units aren't siloed. Let's say you want to take a unit of Havoc Knights. You can put the Barbarian in there, give him a Horse, and Battle Ready. Now you have Scouting Knights. That's about the most utility you can get out of this character other than having random casters spread through. It's not the most amazing upgrade in the world, it's just kind of food for thought for you. Our next unit is the Harbinger of Havoc, 160 points, quality 3, defense of 3, 2 demon swords, 3 attacks in peace with rending, and 2 attacks with stomp at AP1, demon, fear, hero, and toughness 6. You can replace the swords with a hammer, chain, spear, or gauntlet, and they all do their respective things here. You can give them flying with wings and make them into a caster. This is not going to have any unit utility. This is just a beat stick. It can operate on its own. Give it some wings. Replace the swords with spears. And then just have it go hunting big stuff. You can put it into a warrior unit. Give it six attacks at AP6 and just sink it into a warrior unit to go forward and just rip things in half. That's really about all there is to say about that. <laughs> Let's start looking at units. Let's go to Barbarians. 70 points for 10. Quality 5, defense of 5. They come with Furious and Hand Weapons for 1 attack apiece. You can upgrade them to Flails to give them all AP 1 for 10 points. And you can give them a Sergeant, Musician, or a Banner. And since we're seeing it first time in the list here, a Sergeant, a Sergeant gives this model or one model plus 1 to hit. Musician, this model and unit may move by plus 1 inch when taking movement actions. In Banner, this model and its unit get plus one to morale test rolls. I don't usually put these options onto the squads because Smooth Brain Orc, I'll just forget that they're there. So in essence, for me, they are wasted points, but if you can remember this stuff, write yourself a little note next to your unit on the army list. Hey, remember this? It's also, it's always good to have. If you got some points left over, make them a little faster. I don't know, that's probably the best option in my mind. And then for 10 points, giving them all AP1 is always a good idea. It's cheap and just increases the lethality of the squad by a lot. Going from AP0 to AP1 in Age of Fantasy is, in my opinion, worth a whole lot more than 10 points, but hey. Then you can give them the Barbarian Champion, make him scout. So you're starting at the midway point, furious with flails. It's a pretty good shock infantry unit. And with AP1, they might do all right. There's no real option to be able to make them hit better, so 5 plus to hit is what you're going to be stuck with. But they're cheap enough, 5 plus to hit is pretty good. Next we're coming to the Warrior Bricks. 5 of them for 75 points, quality 3 and defensive 3. They each have 1 attack with their heavy hand weapons with AP1. You can replace all the heavy hand weapons with AP1 rending <laughs> with Halberds for rending an AP1. Heavy Great Weapon for AP3, or Dual Heavy Hand Weapons for two attacks AP1. And I'll just say right now, the Dual Heavy Hand Weapons, always a good choice to just make them into more of a blender unit. More so when we do the other versions of the Havoc Warriors dedicated to the different gods. But just for 35 points, doubling the number of attacks in the squad is always a good choice. You can give them Chosen Warrior to make them all hit on two in close combat, and you can upgrade them with a Sergeant, Musician, or a Banner. This is going to be your Bricks of Infantry. Combine the units, 220 points, you got 20 attacks, AP1, hitting on a three. In Age of Fantasy, this is a Sledgehammer Beatstick unit. 
You're going to want to take a Havoc Master or two on foot, either with a Doom Collar or the Dark March. Army Standard Bear, I wouldn't worry about the Fear of Three because this unit is probably going to win combat. Go for the Doom Collar because it's going to make sure that when you win combat, whatever you're fighting either runs or is pinned and will run soon. That's about it for Warriors. They're good. Use them. Next we come to Mutants, which is Warrior Light. Five of them for 95 points, quality four, defensive four, two attacks apiece with fearless and mutations. Mutations is the one where on a one to three you get a rending or on a four to six you get AP plus one. Yeah, this, there's, in my mind, the warriors are going to be better than the mutants. Like if these were fast, then I'd say mutants are good to have one unit in there. But since they're just basic speed, just go warriors. Just go with warriors. Do the dual hand weapons. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to hit more with the with the already built-in AP. Then we got Havoc Ogres, three of them for 110 points, quality four, defense of four, and toughness three. Come with three attacks from hand weapons. You can give them great weapons for AP two and the Sergeant Musician or a Banner. This is a big sledgehammer unit in an army of sledgehammer units. The only real suggestion I can make here is go for great weapons. That way they do have AP in combat because putting them in combat with no AP and they bounce off of stuff that your warriors are just going to tear through kind of is a feel bad moment. So give them the great weapons for the AP. That's the best advice I can give you. Drake Centaurs, three of them for 160 points, quality four, defense of three, toughness three. They come with heavy great weapons for two attacks AP four and stomps for one attack AP one. And you can replace all the heavy great weapons with dual heavy hand weapons for four attacks AP2. The AP4 on this to start with is really, really good. There's not much in Age of Fantasy you're going to see with a defense of two until you get to some truly big stuff. Or if you want to cross over and do Age of Fantasy versus Grimdark Future. So in my mind, what I like to do with them is I run the dual heavy hand weapons, four attacks AP2, just to make it more of a sledgehammer slash blender unit. I mean, without it, they are, they still get two attacks apiece, but most of the time the AP4 is kind of wasted. Next unit are the Havoc Trolls, three of them for 170 points, quality four, defense of four, regeneration, and toughness three. They come with dual heavy hand weapons for four attacks AP1, and you, there are no upgrades for the unit. So this is going to be a sledgehammer unit again, except now we have regeneration and toughness three, so they are going to have a little bit more staying power, even against things that have like AP four. Trolls could just be really annoying for your opponent, especially if you're one of those people that like to spike fives and sixes with the regeneration. But if you're going for straight up damage potential, you know, we got the trolls versus the ogres with the great weapons. Ogres are gonna do more damage with their great weapons. But the trolls are going to last a little bit longer. It's a 30 point difference between the two. The choice on that one is yours. Havoc Furies. Five of them for 75 points. Quality 5, defensive 5, demon and flying. They come equipped with arm blades for two attacks a piece of AP1. Then you can switch them out for two attacks with rending from rending claws. This is just a demon unit straight up from the demon army list. Pushed over into the Havoc Warrior army. With demon they get the ambush or scout. This is going to be the first unit we're going to see that their best bet is going to be to ambush behind the enemy to either hit war machines, artillery, or make them turn around to come and deal with them. And for 75 points, they're cheap enough, they do that job pretty well. But in an army full of beat sticks, these guys are not going to be needed for their offensive power. If you really wanted to, I would say if you're fighting someone with a whole bunch of regeneration, just go for the rending claws. That's about it. Havoc Hounds, five of them for 70 points, quality four, defensive five, fast and strider. They have one attack apiece with rending. You can upgrade them to be poison, and you can upgrade them to have scout. So this is a good unit to have in your army just because they have the fast and strider. Again, they are cheap at 70 points, but they lack a whole lot of offensive power with only having one attack apiece. It does have rending, so it so it's going to take away regeneration, but honestly, you're with only one attack it's not going to be able to do much it'd be better just to give them scouts so they can run around a flank to get behind the enemy to maybe grab some objectives from the side or to jump onto objectives early meaning the enemy has to come and retake them from you so that's about the best this unit can do for the army if they had to get into combat they're not terrible but they're not going to be anything to write home about 
Next unit is Barbarian Horsemen. Five of them for 70 points. Quality 5, Defensive 5, Fast, Furious, and Impact 1 with 1 attack from hand weapons. You can replace a hand weapon with a flail for, for AP 1, and you can upgrade them with a javelin for 12 inches, 1 shot. Now this is going to be your Harasser Cavalry. You can give them the flail, and with the Furious, they're going to do something in combat, but with only one attack at AP1, it's not going to do all that much, but again, we're cheap. It's still 75 points. You can give them the Javelin for 90 points with the flail, and this is going to make them into a true harassing unit to pull enemies off of things. This is a bait unit, because to be in range with your Javelins, you have to be in range for the enemy to charge you. So you can move them forward throw javelins at the enemy, then the enemy gets mad, charges you, baits them off of the objective, and then you can move on to that objective they just left with either some dogs, furies, or another unit of horsemen. Next unit is the Havoc Knights, five of them for 115 points, quality three, defensive three, fast, and impact of one. They have heavy hand weapons for one attack at AP1. You can swap that out for a heavy lance for one attack AP1 with lance, and you can upgrade them to sergeant musician or a banner. Definitely, always, every time, give them the heavy lances. These guys charging in at AP3 is going to be a sledgehammer of your army. Not much is going to stand up to a charge of these guys. The only thing that can do it is if the enemy has more numbers than you have knights. So, combine them, 240 points. This is going to be one of those real investment units, but it's going to be worth it. And with that, you could take a Havoc Master, give them either a horse or a demon mount, and then go for the fear of the army standard. They are going to win combat every time. And giving that guy a heavy lance, you're looking at 345 points. Again, an investment, but an investment that is going to break open the enemy front or smash through a flank and cause all kinds of problems. Then our last unit in the core units is the Demonic Guard Knights. Three of them for 200 points. Fast Impact 2 and Toughness 3. They have hexed weapons for one attack at AP1 with rending and three heavy hooves, one attack at AP1. And again, in this case, give them a lance. Just because, in my opinion, the lance is better than the rending. AP3 is going to be better than fishing for sixes for AP4 and getting rid of regeneration. Of course, that's just my opinion. Your mileage may vary. And again, Best thing to do, have your master on a demon mount with a lance with army standard bearer for fear of three. Coupled with his mount making it fear of four. Again, another unit that is going to bust through the enemy lines and smash stuff. So that does it for the core units. Now onto the vehicles and monsters. We're going to start off with Demon Spawn. 125 points, quality four, defensive four. Dual mutated claws for six attacks, AP one. Demon, Fear 1, Mutation, Strider, and Toughness 6. This unit has no upgrades. This is going to be a cheap monster that can ambush or scout. That's up to you to drop in behind the enemy. And with Toughness 6 and Defense of 4, it is going to be a problem. So the enemy is going to need to move back to send some resources to take it out. Or this thing is just going to run roughshod in the back lines. No upgrades. You can't attach anything to it. That's about all you can do. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give you. A Drake Giant, 145 points, quality 3, defensive 3, fear 1, impact 4, and toughness 6. Have a great weapon for 4 attacks, AP 3. This is just a large version of the Drake Centaurs. So you can theme this to run together. You can't join them. I wish you could. I wish you could upgrade the, one of the Centaurs to be into a Drake Giant. But 4 attacks, AP 3, and impact 4. This is kind of like Chariot Light. It has one job, slam into the enemy and kill stuff. Havoc Shrine, 285 points, quality 4, defensive 3. Giant Fist for 8 attack, AP 2. Stomp, 4 attacks, AP 1. Dark Blessing, Fear 2, and Toughness 12. The Dark Blessing, which gives 2 friendly units within 6, plus 1 to hit next time they fight in melee, is great. And with the names like Giant Fist and Stomp, this is a Chaos Giant. That's, that's what it is. So have this in amongst your units to be handing out Dark Blessing to just make your whole battle line that much better, giving out plus one to hit. Next we have Slaughter Beast, 265 points, quality three, defensive three, fear of two, furious and toughness 12, Razor Claw for eight attacks with rending, and Stomp for four attacks at AP1. The unit has no upgrades, this one has no unit bonuses to give out, it is just fear and furious. So again, straight at the enemy, rip things apart with no AP on his main weapon just rending eh 
I would say go for the Havoc Shrine instead of the Slaughter Beast, just, you know, for that AP. Next unit is the Chimera, 265 points, quality 4, defensive 3, breath attack, fear 2, flying and toughness 12, 4 attacks of AP 1 with stomp, and it's triple jaw, 6 attacks of AP 2. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. Lots of attacks with AP, it has a breath attack, which is going to give you a little bit more damage boosting whenever it's fighting stuff. Fear of 2, just to make sure that it wins combat and flying, so it can jump over and through things. We're just getting better and better large beat sticks. But our next unit, the Vortex Beast, this one gets a little out there. 315 points, quality 4, defense of 3, mutation, fear of 2, regeneration, and toughness 12. It has 4 attacks, AP1 with a stomp, and tentacles for 6 attacks, and then a mutation vortex, 18 inch range, 3 shots, blast of 3. This is a monstrous mortar moving up the board that is not too shabby in close combat. With mutations, it's going to be able to do a little bit more than just the tentacle and the stomp, because it's giving it an extra AP or a rending on top of it, great. But what you're getting it for is that mutation vortex, which in Age of Fantasy, blast weapons can just mess stuff up. A little bit pricey with 315 points, but it's going to do some work on lightly armored stuff. Next unit is the Havoc Chariot, 135 points, quality 3, defensive 3, fast impact 4, and toughness 6. Two heavy crew attacks at AP 2, and two attacks with the hooves. Now, chariots, I think in Age of Fantasy, I feel like they're a little bit lackluster. Because, yeah, as far as just basic stat line, this looks okay. Um, at least it's got AP2 with its heavy crew attacks, but I feel like it should be more. Impact 4 is great on stuff that has, like, low defense value, but a higher impact, a higher defense value isn't that great. Um, yeah, if you got one, I mean, it's cheap enough you could throw it in there. Just don't expect that much out of it. Then there's the Beast Chariot, 150 points, quality 3, defensive 3, fast, fear 1, impact 4, and toughness 6. Heavy Claw for 2 attacks AP 1, and 2 attacks with its heavy crew attack at AP 2. This is just the same thing, just a little bit better. We got some AP on the Claw attacks from the Beast pulling the Chariot. It has fear, so it's probably going to win combat, and that's the only difference. Again, I wish it had a little bit more, but it's cheap enough. It does what it says on the tin. Then the last unit in the army is the Demon Cannon, 145 points, quality 4, defense of 4, entrenched, immobile, and toughness 3, 3 attacks from the crew, and then it's Hellfire Cannon, 36 inch range, 2 shots, AP 1, blast 3, and indirect. You can switch out the Hellfire for Doom Fire for 2 shots at deadly 3, AP 2, and indirect. Now I'm going to say something crazy. In the Havoc Warrior army, there is absolutely no reason to take this unit. There, I said it. I know, I can I can feel all the pitchforks aimed at me, but having a big entrenched and immobile cannon at the back of the army kind of feels wrong for a Havoc Warrior army. With only AP1, it does have Blast, or AP2, and Deadly 3, you, you're going to do more work with just your basic troops. I mean, the Demon Cannon looks cool. It's a cool concept, but you don't need it. So that is everything in the army list. Let's go ahead and look at what I did in the list today. What I got in the army. We're going to start off at the top. We got a barbarian champion and barbarians. Ten barbarians with flails. Barbarian champion with battle ready to give them scout. Just to move forward and take objectives to start with. And then to launch themselves at the enemy. We've got ten warriors with just regular old hand weapons for one attack apiece. And a havoc master with doom caller. Meaning that gives the enemy minus two to the next morale test. They are going to be going up against giants, so it should, so it could work in their favor because they have so many attacks AP one. They could probably out damage the giants to win combat. Another unit of havoc warriors with the heavy hand weapons, one attack a piece. This one is caster, so I can throw out some spells. But we all know my track record with spells. I don't anticipate any of these are going to go off. I might get one off in the whole game. Unit of Havoc Ogres with great weapons. Just because I had some cool models and wanted to throw them on the board. We'll see what they do against the Giants. Then we have a unit of 10 Havoc Hounds. Mostly to be scouting up the board, grab objectives, and just to be a pain in the butt. We got a unit of Demonic Guard Knights and a Havoc Master with the Army Standard Bear. So this is going to be a very scary unit. Whenever they charge into the enemy, they're already up plus four as far as seeing who wins the melee combat. They all have lances. Oh, I forgot to put one on him. Well, we'll see what happens. A demon spawn. 
just to ambush into the back see if we can get a giant to turn around and then two Havoc Shrines because I have some really cool models to use for it and what's better to go up against a giant than other giants so that's gonna be it for me talking about it let's go ahead and do the thing and I'll see you all in the garage so we're gonna start off this game with making the table. We are going to put all of the objectives out in what would be no man's land. And then we're gonna take a scatter dice and two D6 and move them to here. Then we're going to take our six pieces of terrain, put them in the two by two boxes on the table. Again, roll two D6 and a scatter dice and put them here. And then because it leaves it quite open, we're gonna go ahead and take some scatter terrain we have for our desert and we're gonna fill in some gaps. So here's our Havoc Warrior Army for today. We have the 10 Barbarians led by a Barbarian Champion. We have a Havoc Master in charge of 10 Havoc Warriors. Another Havoc Master who is our Sorcerer in charge of another 10 Havoc Warriors. And then we have our Havoc Ogres, our 10 Havoc Hounds. We have three Demonic Guard Knights with another Havoc Master on a Demon Mount. And then in the back we have one Demon Spawn flanked by two Havoc Shrines. I've already gone over the army list back when we were doing the units. So let's go ahead and check out their opponents. Their opponents for today are the Giants who were victorious last week. We have two Giants that are throwing stones. We have three Crusher Giants and then we have one Mega Giant right in the middle. All right, for deployment, we have the Demon Knights here. The dogs have scouted up. Augers are hiding in between the cracks. One Shrine and a Warrior Squad. Barbarians have scouted up, another Havoc Warrior squad with their shrine, and then we have this big fat boy over here is going to ambush. And for the Giants, we got a Crusher Giant, Mega Giant, Rock Thrower, Crusher, Rock Thrower, and a Crusher. Uncle C is here in the garage today to play for the Giants again. Let's see who goes first. Go ahead and roll. Got a three, and Havoc got a four. Havoc Warrior is going first. I almost forgot objectives, that's what we're here for. Let's see, we have a shifting strategy, which means I have to roll dice. That's gonna be number four. Arcane channeling. And cut them down. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have this shrine give dark blessing to this squad and himself, giving them plus one to hit. And then the shrine is going to move out all right so the rock thrower giant is going to get off his high horse up there and throw at those barbarians all right two shots oh you got two hits so it's on the barbarians they save on a five or yeah what's the ap on the on the thing does it have any ap no all right well it doesn't matter i rolled nothing but ones and twos that's going to be six dead barbarians Five, six, and morale test time. They pass on a five. They're gonna fail. So yeah, they are pinned. Our second shrine here is gonna do the same thing with this squad, and then it is going to move out 12 inches. Put itself there. Okay, our second rock throwing giant is going to move to there and throw at the puppies. Two shots. Ooh, whiff. So the units of barbarians is just going to unpin. Big mega giants. Boom. Boom. Our ogres, they are going to take off running and end up over here on objective five. Crusher giant is marching up to meet them. Unit of Havoc Warriors is going to move up right behind the barbarians. Like that. Crusher in the corner. Moving up. Second squad of Chaos Warriors here is going to move to help out the shrine for the fight that they know is coming. Third crusher to that point there. The demonic cavalry is gonna go ahead and bust out a cover over here and they're just gonna set themselves right there. And the dogs, they're gonna charge into the rock throwing giant here. So the Havoc Hounds, they hit on a four. One six and they are rending. One save on a six, it's gonna fail. And he takes one more, so he takes two boosts total. Giant fights back. Let's see, he's 
He's got two hits there. Those are at AP one. The Havoc Hounds are gonna save on six. He's gonna lose one. And the rest of his giant knife attack. He got four there. Saving on five. Ooh, they're gonna lose four. So that's a total of five gone. And the Havoc Hounds, they need to make a morale test on a four. And they pass. Let's check the objectives. Cut them down. We have not lost a whole unit on the board yet. Arcane channeling has not happened yet. But shifting strategy number four, that is where the Barbarians are standing. So they do score that. It means the Havoc Warriors get one point. Your objective is seize two. At the beginning of turn two, the demon spawn is able to pop in using his demon ambush rule right there next to objective number two. Here we go! Giant fight! We're gonna start off the 10 attacks AP2. Hit number three. And the Havoc Shrine isn't quite as tough. His armor save normally is a four, but the AP2 he saves on a six. Whoa, he's gonna take seven wounds. The Giant's three. The Giants three stomp attacks. He hits once. It's a blast three, but he's only fighting one thing. And we save. So the Shrine is down to five wounds, but it is going to fight back. So the Havoc Shrine is a plus one to hit. That means right now he hits on a three. These are going to be his Giant Fists. Eight attacks on a three. AP two. Save on a five. He takes three. Four attacks, AP one on a three. So we got three hits there. Save on a four. Two saves. It's gonna take one more wound, so it's four total. So the try and fail combat morale test. He's gonna pass. The ogres, they are gonna charge into the crusher. So the ogres have three attacks apiece with their great weapons with AP2 hitting on a four. Look for five to save. He's gonna take four wounds, but you have regeneration. Go ahead and roll this four again. You're gonna take three. Giants attack it back. That's gonna be one hit. No, it's gonna be a miss. And six attacks, AP4. Gonna have one hit. Yeah, one hit. Save out of six. Yeah, the ogre takes that wound. A morale test for the Giants. And it is gonna fail, so that Giants gonna be pinned. Hey, I forgot. Fearless. Go ahead and roll that again. Yeah, he's still pinned. The thrower giant is going to take off to number two. So over here in the middle, the shrine is going to charge that same crusher giant. And on his activation, he's going to go ahead and say that the ogres and this squad and the barbarians can get plus one to hit because they don't have it yet. So the shrine is going to use its giant fists and it's going to hit on a three. Six hits, save on a five. It's going to take three. With regeneration, it's going to take two. And then four stomp attacks on a three. Saving on a four. Yeah, saving on a four. So none of those. So re-roll them for regeneration. It's going to take another three. So the crusher attacks back. We got whiff there. Oops. And then one hit. Saving on a six. And it saves. So with that Crusher already pinned and losing combat and getting knocked below half of its health, it is going to take off running. The throwing giant is just going to look at them dogs and throw a boulder at it. Two shots, one hit, and it's going to be two dead dogs. So that's one, two, and then morale test for them. Morale test out of four. <laughs> morale test out of four. They're going to fail. They take off running. So this Havoc Shrine, who's down to five wounds left, is just gonna swing around this way to charge there into the big guy. Eight attacks, hitting on a six. Two, save on a five. Ooh, failed them both. And then giant stomp, whiff. So the big guy attacks back. Okay, six. All right, one hit. One hit with the stomp. With the blast. And it saves. And the rest of his attacks miss. So, so the shrine did two damage to him. It has fear of two, which means it does four. He didn't do anything back, but he has fear of three. So it's gonna be three to four. The shrine wins combat. Big guy needs to take morale test. Well, on a three, he's good. Our little crusher friend here is going to hit the shrine in the rear. We got two attacks with deadly three. 
One hit, 82 saving out of five. All right, he saves. The rest of the crusher attacks. Four hits, AP4 saving out of six. Fails all of those, so he takes four wounds. He's down to one, but he's still kicking. Eight attacks back on a six. Nothing. Four attacks with his stomp. Nothing. Morale test. Failed. So that is going to be for the shrine. Somehow a man with no face runs off screaming. So here in the middle, our warrior squad that's still juiced up from that dead shrine is going to charge in like that. So before attacking, the caster in that squad is going to attempt to use Havoc Charge to give the squad plus two AP. It's a strength three power. They're going to put everything into it. It means it needs a three up. And it fails. So the plus one attack, everything hits on a two. The blacks are going to be the Havoc Master. Okay, three at AP three, so he needs sixes. So none of those. And the rest at AP one, look for fours. Take it four more. Okay, blast to three, looking for sixes, so that's one. Defense of three. They're gonna lose one. And then 10 attacks again, looking for sixes. We got two sixes. Saving out of five. Loses one more. So they're gonna lose two out of that stack. Then morale test for the big guy. And he passes. Our last crusher is just out of range to charge there. So he's gonna hang out right there. We're gonna have our barbarians. They're gonna be able to swoop around the terrain to get into combat here, like so. So with the barbarians, everything's gonna hit on a four because they have been, what's it called, dark blessing. The black are gonna be the barbarian champion with AP three. Everyone else has AP one and they all have furious. So we got two extra hits. These are gonna miss and we're just gonna, there we go. Two at AP three. Two fails, and then four at AP1, looking for a four. That's gonna do it. That's gonna take the big guy out. Our second unit of warriors here, they are just gonna take off this direction. They're still all juiced up from the Dark Blessing. They make it to there. And the unit of Demonic Knights, he wants a fight. We'll give him a fight. So we're gonna start off with eight impact hits on a two. Got seven hits, saving on a three. He's gonna take one while well, he has regeneration. He's gonna take one. Three attacks from a heavy hand weapon from the boss. That's gonna be one hit. Failed to save. Regeneration. Fails. Three heavy lances hitting on a three. Two hits. Saving on a six. Two fails. Regeneration. Takes one. And then four attacks with the heavy hooves. Three hits. AP one. Saving on a four. Fails all three, regeneration. He takes all three. Four. Okay, two attacks with the crusher, there's crushing thing, one hit. Saving on a five. Fails, so that's gonna kill one whole demon spawn. And two hits at AP four, saving on a six. Two fails. So he did three, and then and one guy takes two wounds, that means he did five wounds back. So he took six wounds, these guys took five wounds, he has a fear of two. This guy over here has a fear of four because the mountain gives him one and he is the army standard bearer. That means that they won combat. Time for a morale test. Morale test. It fails, but he's fearless. Roll again. It's good. And the last unit to move this turn is our demonic spawn. He's going to attack Brah, right there. First need to roll on the list of mutations. With a three, he is going to get rending. Six attacks with his dual mutated claws. Hitting on a four, he only hits once with no rending. And the giant saves. One hit, spawn saving on a five. Takes the wound, and then six regular attacks. He's going to hit with three of them, saving on a four. He fails two more, and that means the demon spawn lost combat round test. He's going to be fine. So Tubby is down to three. Let's check objectives. Seize two, we are currently contested. Arcane channeling, no, tried but failed. And cut them down. The Havoc Warriors won that one because they killed two units compared to the Giants one. So one point for the Havoc unit. New objective, slay the king.
Crusher is going to charge back into the Knights. And the Crusher crushing attack. AP2 and D3. Got two hits. AP2, saving out five. That's going to kill off one of the Knights and the rest of the attack. Two hits at AP4. Failed them both. So we're going to do the one, two. So it'll be him and then put a wound here. And then the deadly is going to hit there, leaving nothing but the Havoc Commander left. The Havoc Master is going to attack. The black dice are going to be his great weapon. And the white dice is going to be the hooves from the demonic mount. We got three hits. They're all AP1. Saves them all. So the giant did five wounds to the squad. And the Havoc Master, even with all of his fears, it only adds up to a four. So he lost combat, failed his morale test, and he's gone. We're all evil. What do you mean we don't have Fearless? Over here, we're going to have this Havoc Warrior squad charge into the sky. Like that. This time, our caster is not going to try to bite off that much. It's going to cast Impale. It's a strength two power. It's got two points to spend, spending them both on a four. And fails again. Well, the whole unit's attacks. The Havoc Master is in black. Hitting on a three. Ooh. Saving on a four. Takes one wound with regeneration. Doesn't take anything, so it gets to attack back. One hit. Fails, so that kills the warrior. Three more hits. At AP4, saving on a six. Takes another three, so that means the Havoc Warrior's lost combat. Pass morale on a three. <laughs> Oh, why? I suck at this. <laughs> so they are pinned and we lost, what was it, three? Something like that? Nope. Three? Yeah. Three? I don't know. We're pinned. So that crusher is going to turn and charge into the demon spawn. Two big attacks, one hit. Ah, AP2, so it's saving on a six. That's going to be the end of that demon spawn. So oh, no, the wheels are starting to come off. Over here, we're going to have the ogres charge into this giant. Take their wound marker with them. So the giants have nine attacks, hitting on a four with AP three. Oh, they only got three hits. Save it on a six. Takes three wounds, but he has regeneration. Still takes three wounds. Okay, one hits with the big bada boom weapon. That's going to kill an ogre. And then nothing else. So the ogres did three wounds, taking him down to three. His deadly three came through and popped this guy. So the ogres lose combat, and they're going to have to take a morale test. So they're going to pass morale out of four. Every single time! At least they don't run away. They're just pinned. Oh, Lord. All right, he's going to move there and throw into those warriors there. We got one hit. Saving on three. We lose two. So, beep, beep. Off the back, the big giant is going to charge right there. The Havoc Shrine has eight attacks, AP2, hitting on a four. Actually, we're going to go ahead and say he Dark Blessings himself, so he hits on a three. It's not going to matter here. Seven on a five. Going to take four. And then four attacks with a stomp. Four hits at AP1. Saving on a four. Takes two more for a total of six. Four at AP1. Four at AP1, we got three hits. Saving on a four. Takes one. Three more hits with his regular attacks. Mm -hmm. Saving on a three. Saves them all. So the Havoc Shrine goes down to 11. This guy goes down to four, and it's going to be morale test time on a four. And he passes. So the last giant for this turn is going to move there and just whip a brick. Are you shooting at the warriors or the barbarians? Uh, Warrior Spectre. This is the Barbarians, these four guys? Oh, whoops, yeah. Okay. Two shots out of four. One hit. Saving on a five. That's going to be two dead Barbarians. They're below their number. And they failed their morale test. So they lose two, and they're going to spend another turn with the pin marker. So now these Warriors here are going to charge into that guy. Something like that. Not that it matters, but the Havoc Champion is going to cast Doom Caller on that giant, meaning it's going to get minus two to its morale test. And this is going to be the first combat for them, so they are going to hit everything on a two. And we still get two misses. AP one. He's going to take three. And then the AP threes. That's going to do it. It's going to be the end of the thrower giant. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. 
Slay the King, the Giants get two victory points. They killed the toughest hero on the board. Arcane Channeling, man, that uh, ogre is trying. And then Seize 2, the Giants get two, which means they end up with three points this turn. And the new objectives are going to be Seize 4 and Delve Deep. First activation of the Giants turn on turn number four. He's gonna charge the big guy. Two attacks, AP two, deadly three. We got two misses and then the rest of the attacks. One hit, save on a six. It takes one wound. Eight attacks back. Three hits. Those are AP two, so it's gonna be two wounds go through, but got regeneration. Still takes one. Then the stomp attacks, three hits, three saves. So with all their slap fighting, uh, one and one tied combat because they both have a fear of two. So because they're the only unit that's not pinned, these guys are going to hop to here. So all their attacks hitting on a three. These two from the Havoc Master go through and one more, two more here, but it has regenerates and fails all four. So that's gonna be it for that giant. Boo, he's gone. This guy's gonna go six and what's he gonna do? I'm gonna throw at Throw at the squad? Yeah. Okay. Two shots. Two, two hits. Saving out of three for the Warriors. They're gonna lose one. So bang. All right, Mr. Giants, go ahead and do your last guy because everything else is just pinned. Huh. Crusher attack. Two hits. Saving on five. We got one goes through. That's definitely going to kill a guy. And then we got three hits at AP4. Fails all three, so lose four. One, two, three, four. So we got two guys and the leader fighting back. So everything on sixes. One hit, AP one, saves. Morale test, they've already failed because they're pinned, so that means they take off running. Boop, 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 boop. And the marker. And the last activation we're gonna do, the Havoc Shrine is going to take off into the Giants deployment zone. Let's check objectives, arcane channeling, nope, not gonna happen. Seize four, it's still under Havoc control and delve deep. The only one that got this was that shrine going into the deployment zone. So with a final score of three to four, the Havoc Warriors are able to pull off a win against the Giants, just barely. So as it stands right now, the Havoc Warriors are going to move on. I'm not quite sure who their next opponent is going to be. I haven't thought that far ahead. So that'll do it for us today out here in the garage. Hope you had a great time watching. Hope you all have a great time out there playing OPR games. I hope to see you across the table from me one day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.